Hi, so uh, in the campaign I did a bit of vlogging, in fact after every canvassing session I tried to sort of record 90 seconds of thoughts on what we had heard whilst on the doorstep uh, that morning or afternoon or evening and so I thought that I might carry that forward, not sort of a couple of times a day because you'd get bored of me pretty quickly but maybe once a week uh, come back to you with a sort of couple of minutes of thoughts about what's been on locally and nationally um, just so you sort of know what I'm up to. Um, so many other things that um, I thought we might try uh, new um, compared to what we were doing in the last Parliament is it seems to me that you know you get lots of engagement on Facebook. Um, not all of it is, uh, is always that positive, but still uh, seems to me to be a great thing that we've been underusing previously. Uh, and so I thought I might try and do um, a sort of an hour live on Facebook taking people's questions. Uh, and we're going to try the first one of those next week, next Tuesday evening, I think. We'll sort of put some details up on Facebook in due course uh, and we'll sort of see how that goes, see whether that proves to be popular. Um, and the other thing I thought we'd do is we've always done our surgeries um, predominantly in libraries uh, and that's great. I mean, I think people sort of quite enjoy coming to the library. It's a very sort of non-threatening place. Uh, but I wondered whether or not we might just sort of mix it up a bit and try and use a few different venues um, and just do surgeries in a sort of slightly different way. So we'll still do those sort of library based surgeries that people have come to quite like um, a couple of times a month uh, and we'll do a mixture of sort of you needing an appointment because I know people like the privacy uh, of knowing that their slot is between a certain period of time and that's when they've got me and there's not going to be someone sort of hovering on their shoulder in a queue but we'll also do a few more sessions where no appointment is necessary and I'm going to try and do surgeries in the foyers of supermarkets or um, go into go and put myself in the pub for um, an hour and a half or so a week and see what people make of that uh, and so the sort of different ways of people being able to sort of get in touch and, and chat to me about the things that are affecting you locally or your thoughts on what's going on nationally. Uh, this week has already been quite busy, you know, sort of straight into it after the election. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of uh, anger in Burnham on Sea uh, about changes to the um, INR testing at the Burnham Medical Centre. So sort of being engaged with the clinical commissioning group and the practices and the patient groups. Uh, on that and I hope that we can sort of find a way uh, of getting around that that works for everybody affected. Um, the Western Hospital A&E uh, having to temporarily close overnight, uh, again that's, uh, that's a real shame and uh, very disappointed to hear that that is the case. It is temporary, uh, it's about staffing, it's not about a cut or anything else, but the Care Quality Commission have inspected it and said that that just needs to happen. Um, so there's no debate about whether it can happen, it, is be, it must for safety reasons, um, but clearly the priority now is to get that A&E opened 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, as quickly as we can. Um, last night I was at a public meeting in Wales uh, with the residents from the Bishop's Brook Estate and that had all sort of started from someone who grabbed me whilst I was canvassing in Wales uh, four or five weeks ago and we've sort of taken that on with Crest Nicholson and the management company and last night there was a meeting to just sort of discuss the parking on that development uh, and we've made some progress and I'll now put a bit of pressure on Crest and the management company to make sure that the plan that the residents agreed last night is delivered um, and then we're getting lots of stuff in today, um, this is Wednesday, um, about the travellers who are in Shepton at the moment. Um, I've spoken to the council and I know that they are well advanced in the things that they need to do to get those travellers moved on. Um, and I'm expecting to see some progress on that in the next day or so. Um, and we've spoken to the police. I'm waiting for the police commander to call me back. Um, but I know that lots of people uh, in Shepton are very angry that things have been happening as a result of those travellers being on the playing fields um, and they don't feel that the police response has been adequate. So I'll be wanting to know from the police why that is the case uh, and encouraging them to make sure that, uh, that that is properly policed and that those people don't get away with what they've been doing. Um, up in London, it's been pretty interesting. You know, the Prime Minister came to see us on Monday in the 1922 committee uh, and um, put her hands up and said that the election campaign didn't go as well as it should have done. That'll be no surprise to you. You'll have seen that on the news and, and frankly through the stuff that was coming through your letterboxes over the last couple of weeks. I'm hugely grateful that people sort of supported me locally even when the party's campaign nationally was stuttering. Um, but it was interesting to see her response and I think it's right that she does now carry on 
Uh, I think she has got the support of the parliamentary party. Um, and frankly, there's too much going on right now for us to throw ourselves into a leadership election uh, and to change our prime minister. So we just need to carry on. Um, apparently, the Queen's speech is now going to be next week, which means that a deal uh, with the DUP is done. And I know that lots of people from their emails and their posts on social media are really concerned about a deal with the DUP. Uh, this is not the same as the coalition that we did with the Liberal Democrats between 2010 and 2015. This is not a formal coalition. This is uh, a confidence and supply arrangement, as I understand it. Um, and there are lots of things in the DUP's social agenda which are very much devolved matters for them in Northern Ireland and, as I understand it, will have absolutely no bearing whatsoever on their agenda uh, in Westminster. A and to be clear, I disagree with all of the things that the DUP think about homosexuality, uh, about equality, about rights, um, about abortion. I would resist vigorously any attempts for their agenda in those areas to become any sort of Conservative Party policy within Westminster. But it won't happen because that's not the arrangement that they are seeking to, to form. Uh, but I understand why people are concerned. Um, the reality is, is that the Lib Dems have said that they will not do a deal with anybody, which makes you wonder what on earth they're for. Uh, and the DUP have been in discussion with uh, the Labour Party back in 2010, and now they're in discussion with us. Um, what we need is their support for key pieces of legislation in order to ensure that we are able to govern. Um, what we don't need is for their sort of social agenda to somehow become ours. That would be utterly unacceptable and it wouldn't be in any way in keeping with the politics that, that I have uh, and the things that I'm in Westminster to achieve. Um, so look, that's, um, that's an update on everything that's happened so far in, in, in the first week. Um, as I say, we'll try and record a, a vlog like this every week uh, and do let me know what you think of it. Uh, if it's bored you out of your mind, then let me know and we'll think again. Uh, if you think this is a good way of letting you know what we're up to, then tell me that too. And uh, that'll be encouragement to keep it going. Thanks.